guys, it's Abu Pasha here again. It's been a while since I did the house hacking video and uh, it seemed to prove quite popular so I've decided to make another house hacking video uh, based on the properties that are available. The last one I made was I think in January 2021 so it's almost one year ago so I thought that I'd make another one using the properties that are available in today's market and I'm going to be focusing on house hacking properties which are within commutable distance to London. And the reason why I'm choosing London is because that's pretty much where all the jobs are. So a lot of people, what they do is they live outside of London and they commute in every day or these days three, four times a week um, and they get the London wage. London usually pays more money. Look, Tiny! Tiny! This is... This is the guy who's causing all sorts of problems. Look at him, this guy. London is the place where the wages are usually the highest. So what most people do is they, they live outside where it's cheaper and they commute in every day. That way they get the London wage and they get to live cheaply outside. So what we're going to be focusing on is house hacking properties which are within commutable distance to central London. I'll be looking at as many costs as I can think of and yeah, you'll get an idea as to what's possible and how much it's going to cost. House hacking is something that's quite popular in the USA doesn't really happen much in the UK but it can be done. Basically it's a case where you buy a property and it's in this case we're going to be focusing on, on two bed or three bed properties. So you buy a property and then you let out the rooms. And then you take the income that you get from those rooms and you use that to pay the mortgage. So in many cases, some of these properties that I'm gonna be showing you, if you were to rent them, they might cost you six, seven, eight hundred pounds a month, maybe even more. But when you do the house hack, you can end up paying like a hundred pounds or 200 pounds a month. And in some cases, even zero pounds. So you, the rental income will actually completely offset the mortgage payments. So you essentially live for free. The downside is that you have to live with people, you have to live with lodgers. Um, so it's up to you, you know, whether if this is something uh, that you feel is right. But it's a good way of actually getting onto the property ladder. After you've done house hacking for, say, three or four years and you've saved up enough money, um, what you may then do is you may buy another property, you, you move into that, and then the, the property that you were originally in, you just let it out completely to a family, for example. And that way, you turn that house hacked property into a full blown rental property. So really house hacking is a great way to get on the property ladder. These days we're all being told that property prices are sky high and that for first time buyers it is very very difficult to get on the property ladder. So this is a great way to get on the property ladder. So anyway look, I've said enough, we're going to do some right move searches and I'm going to show you on right move what properties are available and suitable for house hacking and uh, I'll then run through the financials of each property so you can actually see for yourself as to what's possible. So remember that this is just to give you an idea of what's possible. What you should be doing is, is that if you think that this is for you, then you should be going on Rightmove or Zoopla or whatever uh, property website and doing your own searches um, in the area that you want to focus on. So enjoy the rest of the video and if you've got any questions then you can Put that in the comment section and I will answer them. Anyway, enjoy the video. Thank you. So the first thing we're going to do is outline the plan that we've got. So if you want to house hack, you want to buy a property, you want to live in it and you want to rent out some rooms, we've got to first come up with a plan and some rules by which we're going to play the game with. The very first rule is we're going to buy a property using a 95% loan to value mortgage. So let's delve into that because some people are not aware of this. This website is uh, Trussell. Trussell are online mortgage brokers. I'm not affiliated with them in any way and you can go to any mortgage broker that you want to. But this 
information is available on their website. The first thing we ask is what is the mortgage guarantee scheme? The mortgage guarantee scheme is a government scheme that will help first time buyers and some existing homeowners to afford to buy a home with a deposit as small as 5%. This is also known as a 95% loan to value mortgage. I have actually done some searches on an online mortgage finder website and there are plenty of these types of 95% loan to value mortgages. So that's what we're gonna base this all on. We are essentially going to help a first time buyer with not much of a deposit to get on the property ladder, to buy a property that they normally would not be able to afford. So the plan is that we're going to buy a property using a 95% loan to value mortgage. Number two is the property is going to have to be a two or a three bed property so that you can live in one room and let out the other rooms or room. So you'll have one or two tenants. But the property must be within a commutable distance to London. So really no more than one hour. You should be able to walk to a local train station and that train should take you into London within one hour. The reason why I'm focusing on London is that a lot of people choose to live outside of London because it's cheaper and it's more quieter, but they work in London because wages inside London are usually higher. So that's why we're focusing on London. We're going to list five properties with the lowest net cost to you to live in. Now, this is some background reading for you. This is Money as a website. Uh, they deal with financial matters and they provide information with regards to spare rooms and how much money you're allowed to get. Um, in terms of taxation, you're allowed seven and a half thousand pounds tax-free. Anything more than that, you'll have to declare it and uh, you'll be taxed on it. So they talk about turning your spare room into spare cash, uh, everything you need to know about getting a lodger and the government's rent a room scheme. So the UK government are actually encouraging this, by the way. So before you think that, oh, this is illegal. No, the government are actually encouraging you to do this. What it is is that they want people to use their spare rooms to provide accommodation to people. They want this. That's why they've brought in this scheme. So it's not illegal, it's not some sort of covert, dodgy scheme. No, the government have rubber-stamped it, green-knit it and said, come on guys, do it. I'll post up the link for this uh, in the description of this video so you can have a full read of that. This here is spare room. If you've got a room to let out, you can actually put up an ad on spare room. And what I've done is for every single postcode of each property, I actually typed it in to actually find out how much uh, landlords are actually charging for rent per month for these spare rooms. Then we have the mortgage finding services. This is Money Supermarkets Mortgage Finding Services. Uh, so for example here, I've listed a property of 240,000. The deposit amount that you're providing is 12,000. That's 5%, 25 year tour term and a repayment mortgage. And you've got all these results that have come up. So there are plenty of lenders who are willing to give you that 95% loan to value mortgage. So you're not going to have an issue. Speak to a mortgage broker and they will find you an appropriate mortgage once you've told them exactly what you want and what you plan to do. So these are the costs that you've got to consider when house hacking. The utility bills, that includes water, electricity, gas, council tax, internet or broadband, insurances, maintenance of the property, and the monthly mortgage payment to the lender. For simplicity, items one to five have not been included in the costings. 
for the properties featured in this video. But when you evaluate a property for the purpose of house hacking, all the items listed above should be included in your calculations. So just remember that. So I just want to quickly run through this table before we actually look at the properties that I found. So the first thing we've got is we've got the right move link and that's self-explanatory. The next column is for asking price. The next column is for how much is the deposit. So in other words, if you were to buy the property at the asking price, what would the deposit be? 5% uh, how much that is. The next column is how much is the mortgage amount. So this is 95% of the asking price. The next column is the expected annual income. So mortgage lenders will lend based on how much money you are earning. Remember, this is a buy to live property, not a buy to let property. So the mortgage that you're going to get is a buy to live. And what you'll need to do is we're looking at an income multiple of 4x. Now, you can get some mortgages which are up to 6x, I think, and even 7x. But we're going to play safe. We're just going to do 4x uh, as our multiple. So you have a mortgage amount. Let's just say that you, you need to borrow 100,000 uh, using a 4x multiple. You would be expected to have an annual income of 25,000 pounds. 25,000 times 4 and that's 100,000. And the more money you earn, the higher your salary, usually mortgage lenders will lend you more. So it's all done using income multiples. And also the other thing is, as part of your research, you must speak to a mortgage broker first, get an idea of how much money they'll lend you, explain to them what it is that you're trying to do. So you will explain that plan is to buy a property and then I'm gonna let out a room in that property. So I need a mortgage that can do that. Very important. The next one is the mortgage payment. So I'm going to calculate the mortgage payment every month uh, based on the amount of money that you have borrowed. Now, some properties are leasehold properties, for example, flats, and they incur a monthly service charge and possibly a ground rent as well. So if there is a service charge and ground rent incurred, then I've also listed that here. The next one is that if you rent out one room or rent out two rooms, what is the rental income? So I went to spareroom.co.uk and I found out in that particular postcode, how much do rooms rent out for? And then I've listed them here and I've used that as my calculation. Right, then the next one is for the important one is the net housing cost to you. In other words, every month, after you've paid out the mortgage and received the rent and also paid out for your ground rent and service charge, if that's applicable, what will be the net expenditure for you to own that house and to run it? And we're trying to get this figure as low as possible, even bring it into the minus, which actually I have achieved, um, but we'll go into that later. And finally, I've also listed the train times to central London. So basically these properties are located not in London, but just outside London and I've listed the amount of time that it takes by train to get to a major London terminal. I've already run through the search. As of early December, all these properties are available to buy, but I'm going to show you how to do a search so you can do it at any time. This didn't take me a long time, by the way. This probably took me about three hours, so you can actually do this search pretty quickly once you know what you're doing. So now, without any further ado, I'm going to show you the properties. The first property we've got, this one's in Gillingham. Gillingham is slightly south of London, and it's a 51 minute trip from Gillingham Station to either London Blackfriars, London Cannon Street, or more typically London Victoria. So this one is positioned on top of shops. I generally don't like to go for properties that are on top of a shop but one advantage that you do get with properties above a shop is that they tend to be very spacious. So let's take a very quick look. It's in good condition. It's very spacious. This is a two bedroom property. So basically you would let out one bedroom. So you'd have one lodger. All right, these are the pictures. 
It's a Gillingham Kent ME7, two bedrooms, one bathroom. This is the floor plan. So my idea would be that you should take bedroom two because it's smaller and give the tenant the bigger bedroom, which is the main bedroom. That's this one on the right. The shared accommodation will be the living, kitchen, dining, and also the bathroom. All right, so this is a very simple property, nothing complicated. Uh, you will have to find out how much the ground rent is, if there is, and also service charge, if there is. So you'll need to ask that from the agent. So let's go back to our table. Now, here are the numbers. So £140,000, let's pay the asking price. Your deposit's gonna be £7,000. Your mortgage amount is gonna be 133000 and I've already run that through the mortgage finding service. So there are mortgages that will allow you to do this. And your expected annual income should be £33,250 a year. Now, bear in mind, we went with a very safe four times multiple. You can actually get mortgages of six times multiples. So you may not even need to earn this amount. This is a very safe amount. You'll probably get away with somewhere in the region of twenty. £5,000 a year, but that's for you to discuss with the mortgage broker. But we're going to go safe, so you'll need to earn £33,250. Uh, the mortgage payment is £586, which I calculated from the mortgage finding service on Money Supermarket. The service charge and ground rent, now I don't know how much this is, I haven't contacted the agent about this you'll have to do that uh, but i'm going to estimate roughly speaking it's going to be about 100 pounds a month generally what i find is that service charge and ground rent combined is usually about 100 pounds a month unless the apartment is very swanky if it's really luxurious then it's usually higher but usually it's around 100 pounds a month so that's what we're going to estimate on now from spare room i input the postcode of this property and it turned out that, roughly speaking, you should be able to get £490 for the room per month. All right, all bills included, so you'll have to pay that. So that brings us to the net housing cost to you. So you'll have to pay £586 mortgage plus £100 service charge and ground rent. That's £686, but you'll get income of £490 and that results in £196 per month. That's how much it's going to cost you. Uh, for the housing costs, just the housing costs, to keep hold of this property. £196 a month, which is very reasonable, I think. So, on to the next one. This is the same price, but the location is Luton. Gillingham is south of London. Luton is north of London. Gillingham takes 51 minutes to get into London. Luton Parkway takes 34 minutes to get into London. So this is actually more closer and faster to get into. But as you'll see, the net housing cost is gonna be a bit more. So we've got 140,000 pounds. Let's quickly take a look at the property. It's a big block of flats. And here are the pictures. It's a very clean, ready to move into. Uh, you might have to do a bit of work to it, but it's pretty clean and nice. I, will, I wouldn't have any issues. So those are the pictures two bedrooms so you'll let out one bedroom and you will keep the other one so this is the floor plan again I if I were you I'd go with the smaller bedroom bedroom two and you would let out the main bedroom which is bigger uh, for the tenant right you've got the living room here that's going to be shared kitchen shared toilet and bathroom shared let's now go through the numbers same price exactly the same as the property in Gillingham 140,000, 7,000 pound deposit, 133,000 pounds of mortgage. You will need a salary, 33,250 pounds per annum. Mortgage payment, 586, exactly as it is for the previous property, 100 pounds for service charge. But the rental income for this is actually lower. So in Gillingham, you could get 490 pounds per room. Here, it's gonna be less, 450 pounds per room. The net housing cost to you is going to be £236, so it's basically £40 more expensive. Right, so now we're increasing the budget a little. So £150,000, we should get something a bit nicer and it will cost a bit more to keep, but it's going to be a nicer place. So this one cost £150,000 in Rochester, which is south of London. And to get from Rochester to central London, it takes 38 minutes by train. 
So here are the pictures, 150,000. So you can see that it's empty and it's ready to move into, nice and clean. It's not in great condition, but you can move into this and it will require minimum work to it. I think this is its own garden, but again, you need to speak to the agent, but it's a big garden. Okay, those are the pictures. And let's take a look at the floor plan. My recommendation would be to give bedroom one to the tenant. That way, that tenant is out of the way, it's private, and they're not gonna be disturbed. And you will take on bedroom two. Bedroom two, I think, is a bit smaller. The lounge, the dining room, the kitchen, bathroom, all shared. So let's go back to our table. So, 150,000 uh, pounds, 7,500 pounds deposit you need. The mortgage is gonna be 142.5K. And the expected annual income that you should have is 35,625 pounds. The mortgage payment per month is 628 pounds. And the service charge we're saying is 100 pounds. It's a leasehold property. The rental income is £490, so the room will rent out for more money than in Luton. Luton's cheaper. And the net housing cost to you is £238. And the train time into London is 38 minutes. That's Rochester. Next one, we're going back into Luton. So this is Luton. Luton is actually a good place because it's quick to get into London. Now, the good thing about this, this is a three bedroom flat, and I think it has two bathrooms, but I'm not sure. It wouldn't make much difference though. This is a three bedroom flat, so you would rent out two rooms. So let's go through the pictures. Nice and clean, nice view. That will need to be cleaned up. The flooring looks nice, the decor's good. Very nice bathroom. This is built to be house hacked. So those pictures and there's no floor plan uh, but they do list what's available within the description immaculate condition yes three bedrooms refitted bathroom decorated to a high standard yes agreed it looks nice so let's go back to the figures the table so this property is 170,000 pounds now the deposit is eight and a half thousand pounds so it's more than it was for the uh, previous properties. The mortgage amount is 161.5K. Your expected annual income should be £40,375. The mortgage payment per month is gonna be £712 per month. Uh, the service charge we're saying £100. These are estimated, so the service charge is estimated. You will need to phone up the agent and find this out. Now, because there's two rooms that you're gonna rent out, each room is gonna get 450 pounds a month. So multiply that by two, that gives you 900. Now here's the beautiful thing about this. Your housing cost is minus 88. That means for you to live in this property, you will actually earn money. So essentially by owning this property, you are earning yourself 88 pounds a month. That's just housing costs. Obviously you've got utility bills, etc., maintenance costs, but just the housing cost, 88 pounds is coming into your pocket. 37 minutes from Luton train station to a London terminal, so that's good. Now we up the budget further. This is 195,000 pounds, and this is even better because I'll, I'll explain to you later. 195,000 pounds, this is in Chatham. Chatham is where I was born. 195,000 pounds, three bedrooms. So you're gonna rent out two bedrooms. You will live in one bedroom and you will rent out two. Uh, let's go through the pictures. Nice and clean, ready to move into. Nice kitchen, nice bathroom, nothing wrong with this. Nice to move into immediately. This is the cellar, so don't expect uh, this to be beautiful. It's a cellar, it's just for storage. That's what it looks like outside. Got some outside space. That's what it looks like from the front. Let's take a look at the floor plan. So the first thing we've got is the cellar. Don't really need to worry about that. This is the ground floor. You've got the lounge, the dining room, kitchen, bathroom, and then you've got the bedrooms up here. So you've got bedroom one, bedroom two. These are the ones that you let out. You will take the smallest bedroom. 
So you're going to have to get used to that, living on, in a small bedroom. But bear in mind that you also have two reception rooms. So most of your time probably is going to be spent in the reception rooms, while your tenants, uh, when they're indoors, they'll probably spend it in, in their bedrooms because they're big enough. Okay, so you're going to have two tenants. So let's go through the numbers. £195,000 in Chatham, 9.75k, so that's £9,750 you need for your deposit. Your mortgage amount is going to be £185,000. Your expected annual income should be around £46,000. Your mortgage payment per month is 816 Because this is a freehold property, you do not pay any service charge or ground rent, so that's zero. The rental income, you've got two rooms. Now, I calculated that you should be able to get £475 per room in Chatham. And I did that using spare room, entering the postcode, and £475 is absolutely achievable. Mortgage payment is 816 minus 950. That gives you 134 minus. So that means that for you to live here while you have two tenants in place, you are going to be earning £134. So your housing cost just your housing is minus 134, which means you will be paid to live in this property. Now, obviously, you've got to pay utility bills, your own groceries, for example, maintenance costs. But essentially, you are living here for free. So there is a Chatham train station and it takes 51 minutes to get to a London terminal. And so there you have it, guys. Within two to three hours, I was able to find two properties that after the rooms have been rented out, they'll be cash flowing and you wouldn't actually have to be paying anything for your housing expenses. Of course, you've got to factor in things like your utility bills, any insurances, you've got uh, your own bills, train fares, etc. But once you factored that in, you will realize that using house hacking, you can actually save a lot of money. So if it took me less than three hours to find two properties that were cash flowing, it shouldn't take much time for you either to find a property that uh, gives you a near zero cost uh, to your housing expenses. And with that, that's the end of the video. These videos usually take me quite a lot of time to edit, so if you can give me a like and subscribe, that would be very much appreciated. It's free of charge for you and it does me a huge favor. So until the next video, thanks for watching.